Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to be making a handle for my new Tuca Cam. Okay, first of all, what's a Tuca Cam? A Tuca Cam is a Welsh carving knife with a larger handle on it. Uh, traditionally, it's used for hollowing out bowls, cups, or spoons. So when I decided that I needed a Tuca Cam, I started looking around and they're hard to find. They're very difficult. Uh, I've been on a couple waiting lists already. But I ordered one from Belzebu Crafts in Portugal. Uh, the guy's a blacksmith, and I just got the box in the mail the other day. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. So I can put a link to uh, Belzebu Crafts. I got a hold of them on Facebook. I think the wait time was maybe four weeks, maybe six weeks, something like that. Not bad at all. I'm still on other uh, blacksmiths waiting list for Tuca Cam. I may just stay on them. I may just be happy with this one. Um, I believe this is like a 50 millimeter. It's right around at 2 inches. And you can see how much larger it is than a more traditional straight up spoon knife. Now I saw Barn the Spoon use one of these in his videos. And, you know, he just with a solid radius like this doesn't matter what the angle or the spoon or the bowl or the knife is you are just making one constant radius so here's a here's a view of what we're looking at here there's the logo I also got a sloyd knife, uh, sloyd knife off him uh, I'm gonna have to put a handle on that also he is just a blacksmith uh, haven't used it yet obviously but uh, the quality is pretty good uh, I'm really impressed with it. It comes razor sharp out of the box. And you can see if this was a traditional spoon knife, you know, the handle would only be maybe a couple inches longer than it is now. And a lot of times, this is not a steady radius. It'll open up a little bit one way. And that's good for certain aspects, depending on what type of the knife you're using, what side of the knife, what angle of the knife you're doing. You can do different size uh, concavities. With this, you're doing one size and that's it. Your only variable is the depth that you go into it. So for a handle for this, I've got a piece of dried black walnut here. Uh, it's a pretty good size stock. I cut it down with uh, just a saw. Now this is going to be something that's oversized and it's probably going to go right to around my elbow. I got this a little bit longer because I'm going to use the end of it for another project. Uh, I'm going to try to put this on the shave horse and use my draw knife now I've seen a lot of uh, Tuca Cam handles that are just a stick, you know, right out of the woods. Take a green stick, drill a hole in it, epoxy the blade in, and you're good to go. That bark gives you a little bit of uh, grip on the stick to turn it. Uh, with this one, I'm going to try to do flats. So I'm going to maybe make 8 or 12 flats is my end goal. Because this is a dried piece of wood, I don't know how well the draw knife's going to work. I may have to go to a saw. But I'll keep you informed on it. Alright, so the draw knife did not work at all. It was the wrong tool for this job. You know, I locked it in the horse, and everywhere I bit, it just dug and dug. Now this is honestly like 35-year-old dried black walnut. Uh, this is a scrap piece that I was using for another project. I thought it would make a nice handle, but because this is dry wood, I'm going to have to go with a saw on this. Now I set, set my uh, circular saw at 45 degrees and I cut it to try to catch this, this gouge in here and it's not quite deep enough. This is probably going to be a long enough handle like it is so I'm just going to go with it. I'll show you the process real quick. So basically I'm kind of using my hand as a guide here and I'm using this as a stop so that I get a consistent cut down the length of the board. It doesn't have to be exact. to get that octagonal shape. Alright, so my handle's more or less done. Now, I figured out approximately how long I want to mount this to cam, and again, 
this is the first time I've ever used the one, but nobody sinks theirs in all the way. I always see, you know, maybe a third of it out. And that could be to let, uh, let you choke up a little bit and actually get a hold of the handle itself. It's more than likely clearance. You know, if I've got this handle jammed all the way in and I get down into a, a bowl or a cup and I'm uh, bottoming out on the handle, you know, that's as deep as I go. So I'm going to come out with it. Yeah, maybe an inch or so. You know, that way I can get fully down into this recess. And this is metric. You know, this is from Europe. So I got approximately the right size bit measured out about how I want. And uh, I'm going to try to drill down as straight as I can. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, like I said, I was going to try to go as straight as possible. And you can see, you know, a little bit of human error. And usually when I do a job, there's a lot of human error in it. Uh, I'm going to index the blade so that it slopes up a little bit. That'll help it tuck into my arm. So the wind was picking up outside, and I had to come inside for this last portion. I have my Tuca cam all taped up. There is a leather guard under here for my safety. Also, the handle's all taped up. This is unfinished right now. I did not put the oil on it yet. And I've got it all taped up right to where the, where the tape stops. I also have an index mark with tape because remember I wanted to have it sit in this orientation because it's got a slight rise to it. And for epoxy, I'm just going to be using Gorilla Glue. Okay, so I'll just index this, make sure it's straight at 12 o'clock. So I got the Tuca cam mounted in the handle. You know, like I said, this was long, a little bit longer than I wanted, but uh, you know, a little, add a little versatility to the tool. And if I'm unhappy with the length of this, you know, I can just cut it down. Uh, there's the logo again. And this thing is just, just silly sharp. So the only thing left to do to this is go ahead and oil the handle up and that'll make the grain really pop on this black walnut. But before I do that, you know, I just wanted to give a real quick demo before it got all oily. So you see how that bowl is turning out nice and symmetrical. Now that I've got the bowl established, I can cut the rim to match. So, you know, that's the beauty of the Tuca Cam. You know, it gives you consistent, you know, circular bowls on these. And I've still got a long ways to go as far as learning the ins and outs of the tools, but so far so good. Let me put some oil on this and we'll finish. So with any new tool, there's a learning curve with this. Again, this feels a little long to me. I'm probably going to nub it somewhere around here. But I am going to, you know, use it a few more times. Possibly even lock in a bowl or a cup and two-hand it. See if that helps a little bit. But the only thing left to do to this right now is to put some kind of oil in the wood. So I'm going to use a butcher block oil. So here's what I'm using. You know, olive oil, vegetable oil, anything works just fine on this.
Here we can see the difference. So this will protect the wood. It'll uh, definitely make it look better. So I might have to do a couple coats initially. And then, uh, you know, as time goes on, if I think it needs, if it looks a little dry to me, I'll just throw another coat on. This is not a tool that you're going to be leaving out anyway, so it's not going to be exposed to the elements. So there's one coat. See how nice that looks? So, if you're getting serious into carving, or you're just looking for something a little better than the standard spoon knives. The Tuca Cam is a heck of an option. Uh, they're hard to come by. Again, this is Belzavu Crafts. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it did not take as long as I thought it would. You know, I was kind of concerned, you know, shipping euros to Portugal and hoping I get something back in return. But, you know, I did get this and I got a Sloyd knife, which I'm going to be uh, putting a handle on in another video. But you just get the tool. You have to improvise your handle. Uh, and again, this is just basic, uh, basic work. This has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you next time.